It's a serious thriller. What's the tone on set for like this? Can you take us into a couple of scenes? What was your funniest or most memorable moment from sort of shooting this? I amused myself by asking young people if they recognize this super famous name from our lives and watching them say no. So I'd say, uh, do you know who Johnny Carson is? And they'd go, who? And then I'd, <laughs> I'd watch go, their what? What are you talking about? The one that sent her into a dizzy was I said, Ted Danson. And they were like, nothing. And I was like, okay, I, no, no, that's impossible. <laughs> that is impossible. And they were like, I don't know who that is. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and no one knew. Or like, Vivi, uh, like they asked the makeup artist, hair and makeup, Vivi Tran, who Ted Danson was, and she didn't know. And I was like, I know who Ted Danson is. One thing that was always surprising to me was like John, when you know we bring the slate in front of him, would always on the first day start hitting it, and like, but he wouldn't, he, he wouldn't like change his face. He would just hit it. And at first we were all like, did he just hit the slate? Like, but he's not. No one's acknowledging this. And then he just kept doing it. I'm like, oh, I guess it's just the John thing to do. Just like hit the slate. Sometimes when the camera will come up, he'll just like hit it. It is an innovative way of storytelling. Can you sort of introduce audiences to that and what it adds to the movie? The idea of the movie is uh, first, you know, recognizing that we're living so much of our lives and having so much communication through our devices. You know, the conversations that were happening heretofore or previously uh, face to face are happening in our devices. And the movie saying, how do we dramatize those moments? Um, how do we throw them up on the big screen? And, and, you know, it used to be just a camera over a person as they were typing or, you know, sending instant messages on, on their computer, but now it goes inside. Our big objective was to make a very classic story. Me and Sevahanin, who's the co-writer in the film, we f our bet was that if we wrote a very structured and classic story and always focused on the story first, that the way that it was told would just inform the story as opposed to the other way around. And I think if there was the gimmick in front of the mo in front of the story, the movie would have fallen apart. But for us, the whole challenge, had all the whole two years of making this film was like focusing on the story. And if we focus on the story, this thing would fall in place as well. Hopefully it feels cinematic, and, and I think it does. Mm -hmm. How good are you guys with sort of technology? How much do you rely on your smartphones? Too much, I, admittedly. Especially when I became a parent, when my son became of the age where he could hold a phone, you know, or we had babysitters, you know, just always being able to be in contact with him and knowing what's going on in his life. You know, it's <coughs> all in the phone. It's all about the phone. And also about just catching up with the news of the day because things happen every 10 minutes now. It's hard to really understand it all and you can get little little tidbits uh, throughout the day. Often you have to cut scenes that you really like. Are there any deleted scenes that stand out for you that may turn up later in another version? Well, it's hard because in this film, you know, you learn early on what you need to delete because like you don't start with the final product you start with a sketch of it you know and you're constantly building on a sketch so early on we're looking at the sketch of a scene and realizing we don't need to do that so we ended up never making it in its completion so there's no real deleted scenes though there are all there are plenty of bloopers